Hey guys, it's Drew here and today I'm going to make a video about a project that I'm going to be starting for myself and you can join in too. Um, I got to thinking about some of the videos, content, ideas um, that I shared with you guys uh, in the past, especially last year when I had more time to make videos and more space to make videos. And one of my most favourite things to do was the top deck. Tuesdays where I would pick a deck, I would spend some time with it, develop a relationship and then come back the next week and share it with you guys. And you guys really like that. So I was thinking today about sort of what would I want to do if I was to make some more videos during a summer because I do it is summer and I have time off. And I was looking at my altar and thinking about what I put on my altar and why it's there at this current moment. And how um, with the summer, uh, I do have a lot more time to be spending at the altar and um, adding different things to it and really experiencing it and questioning why, quest <laughs> questioning why I actually put particular things on it because everything on it has a specific purpose for me. Um, I have two altars uh, next to my bed. I have one that is fully dedicated to the Morrigan to uh, my gaming magic, to my draconian magic, which is not wicker draconian magic, just my own chaotic <laughs> magic, and also my pop culture magic, which um, at the moment I'm working with Team Wolf and have been for the past year. And my second altar is really dedicated to uh, my Hindu path, Hindu pantheon, where I work with Shiva and Ganesha and Kali and Brahma. And it's really just a place that I can work with those specific deities. It's close to my bed because that's where a lot of my dreaming happens. And it is also a bookshelf, or both of bookshelves, um, that hold most of my spiritual stuff because I live in a share house. It's quite small. My room is actually the smallest room in the house. And, you know, I have to think about the use of space. And I think this has been one of the most uh, a blessing in disguise in terms of going from having my own house to and having two rooms to myself um, to a small room where I have limited space where I really have to question um, what I bring what I what I'm bringing in what I'm not bringing if that makes sense sorry <laughs> okay so ramble this video is probably gonna be rambling uh, like I said it got me thinking about the things that I have on my altar and I wanted to start a series it's not gonna be a weekly series it's just going to come up when I feel like I want to work with something and share my experience with you guys. Um, like I said, if you want to join in, you can, because I know that a lot of people do have altars that have a lot of objects or important objects. And I think it's really cool just to, to pick them up and actually start asking um, yourself like how you can develop a stronger relationship with that, much like with a tarot deck. Um, it is a relationship. You are putting energy into something. You are drawing energy for something as well. And that energy shifts as you evolve. So the first week, um, and what really prompted it, is this stag. Um, I think it was initially a Christmas item from last year. And I've had this since I lived at my old house. But I absolutely love it. Um, mostly because I do work with um, the horned god and um, I guess you can say those kind of uh, like stags and deers and I don't even know if they have horns but you know like the horned archetypes um, yeah let's just go with that because I'm really articulate today <laughs> so yeah I, I really work with that energy and Lately I've been feeling like uh, I've been coming back to working with a lot of spiritual um, animal energy and um, like ethical energy and how do you work with different um, animal bones and things like that because I actually do have, I don't know if you can see in my bookshelf over there, I actually do have a rabbit and kangaroo skull which are legitimate bones um, that was given to me so I'm always interested in how to use um, like found objects and objects that represent different cycles of nature and humanity and animal 
tools and all that kind of stuff in my practice because fundamentally I like to draw from things that um, take me a little bit away from a sort of buy by buy culture that I definitely do give a lot of money to. And so when I bought this, I had the intentions of sort of working with that energy of, yes, it. I think it cost me like a dollar or something, but I really wanted to use it as a gateway to actually explore other objects that I have found around me, that I find on my walks, that um, that people have given me, or you know, things that just really turn up at the right time when I'm exploring different facets of my magical bar. And so, um, for example, Pan or Serenos have been a really influential role in my life as well, um, depicted as the horn god. and. I'm not really much of a person who's into Christmas per se. I like it, I enjoy it, and it's fun. And I can see the magical energy of Yule, but because I do live in Australia, things are turned upside down, so I don't often experience that kind of energy. And really what the Horn God means to me is working with the masculine energy. Um, and lately I have been working with Hades, um, God of the Underworld. And I usually do a lot of work with him um, because I do work a lot with Pluto and I do work a lot with Scorpio energy. Um, all my gods and goddesses are usually death gods and goddesses um, or um, war or things like that. So I wanted to see what my experience would be like if I picked up this particular object and work with it for quite a while. I'm thinking probably like a week would be a good time to start to see if whether this experience or experiment will work. Um, I'm all, all about magical experimentation, as you guys know, and so I'm really keen to see um, what will come out of this simple object, because really it's a mass-produced object, object. And I'm always curious about um, how we can take something that's also mass produced and really create and work upon and build upon energy in it and create some sort of, um, I guess, manifestation place. Um, much the same way as sigils, I believe that like objects are very much like sigils. They do hold the potential to be gateways and portals for really powerful magic. And it has nail polish on it. <laughs> but and I really love it. I just think it's really cool. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. I am thinking that I'm going to thread some of my main practices um, with it. So for example, I work heavily with dreams. Um, so having it next to my bed or having it next to like on my bed when I'm writing or reading or meditating. Um, I think that would be a really good way to develop a relationship with that. I tend to keep a lot of my decks and books and stationary goods on my bed anyway, but um, having it with me at all times might be an interesting idea. Taking it out, taking it into nature, taking it to my favourite places. Um, also doing some tarot readings with it, uh, like sort of like an interview with the object, um, and letting it sort of tell its own story as well. And I think weaving one of my favourite parts of magic, which is word magic, along with this um, particular um, object, would be a really uh, fun, creative and engaging way to um, work with this piece. Because I have felt like ever since I got it, I haven't really spent much time with it. I don't know why it has its place on my altar, other than it's a representation of something that I have worked with for a while but I don't really know um, what it has to show me yet, other than just the basics of reminding me of a traditional correspondence to something that I have learnt over the past couple of years of delving into my life as a witch, so if that makes sense to you guys. Um, I guess a perfect example of what I feel like objects are in terms of my magical practice is my anchor necklace and I got this again for a dollar. Um, I'm pretty cheap when it comes to magical supplies 
but it's what it represents that holds more importance than the uh, value of it and it holds significance to me because in terms of um, pop culture magic there is kind of like this um, I guess you can say correspondence is already naturally woven into the Teen Wolf world and one of Scott McCall's um, I guess symbols, sigils, points of energy is the anchor and it really is about how he can anchor into it himself and be his own anchor and I think that's something that has been really important to me moving through the past year um, coming out of the really entrenched toxic relationship that I had and into single life and developing my own individual life again finding myself as an individual person um, healing through a lot of things as well and being my own anchor in my magical practice and in walking through the world so to me this is also a representation of him who I also work with in my magic as well um, he is a leader and an alpha um, in terms of the storyline or the plot in Team Wolf but um, I have found that pop culture has been such an immediate and powerful magical practice for me that as soon as I learned and integrated what um, the anchor represented, it has really actually helped me to understand what objects mean in my practice as well and why they are so integral to um, shifting things and moving things and working with things as well. So, yeah. So I think I've rambled enough and hopefully I'm making some sense and I c I'm a little bit nervous because I haven't made a video in quite a while and I haven't really talked about my inner magical practice in quite a while other than publishing articles um, in Witch Race magazine and pitching to other places and things like that. Um, so yeah, but thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you all later. And I hope you enjoy. And if you have any thoughts about this, please share them because I made the video so you guys can share on this experience as well. So, thanks. Bye.